Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ima ba'd So if an individual is having or is indecisive about what they should do with their time especially if they've reached the age and they have to make difficult choices in their life and I myself had the same had to make the same decision when I was a young man and about what to do not only with my life but out of my love for Islam and wanting to better myself and my understanding of the religion should I go seek the knowledge meaning go seek knowledge about Islam to further and advance my studies about Islam you know travel to distant lands and I myself I chose to go to Yemen and then later was blessed to go to Saudi Arabia or should I pursue other studies my secular studies pursuing a master's degree and so forth there's nothing wrong with pursuing the studies those secular studies which are going to help you in your life meaning to practice uh, help you with your livelihood and so forth so that you're not dependent upon the people meaning begging the people asking for money and so forth however if you compare when it comes to making a comparison you can't compare secular knowledge to Islamic knowledge because Islamic knowledge is going to benefit you in this life as well as the hereafter the secular knowledge generally is restricted to benefiting you in this life so Ayola Habba, we should look at a couple of ahadith of the Prophet alayhi afdal salatu wasalam about the importance of Islamic knowledge. And one of the things the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam advised us to or ordered us to do, and that was from his sunnah, to supplicate to Allah for beneficial knowledge. And beneficial knowledge, Ayola Habba, as the scholars of Islam, explain is knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, because we are in a, a, an extremely delicate time period in the history of man and in the history of Islam and we are in need of more Islamic scholarship of scholars and students of knowledge and people to propagate Islam in its correct and pristine form because we do have people who call to the gates of Jahannam. We have people who say it's okay to worship graves. And we have people who say that it's okay to supplicate to the dead and your grandfathers and so forth and say so and so and say to so and so. And we do have people who actually make uh, circumambulation around graves. And we do have people who negate the divine names and attributes of Allah, even though it's mentioned in the Quran and affirmed in the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet. So we have people calling to all kind of things, but we are in a extremely, imp we have a, an urgent need for individuals to call to the correct Islamic creed, and that can only come through correct Islamic knowledge. al nafi as the Prophet ﷺ said. One of the ahadith that I wanted to mention is the Prophet ﷺ said, Whenever Allah wants good for a person, he gives him knowledge of the religion. So the scholars say about this that there's mafhum mukhalifa also in this hadith, or the mafhum mukhalifa in this hadith is that whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want good for, or a sign that Allah does not want good for a person, is they don't give any, that He doesn't bless them with knowledge of his religion or understanding of his religion meaning the person who stays stagnant their whole life and they don't advance themselves even with one ayat or understanding one ayat or practicing even one ayat this person is in a loss and I'll tell you a, a, a true situation I just recently encountered some of our brothers from I'll just say one of the Arab countries and I won't mention where and it's a country that's known also, unfortunately, because of the strife that they go through, that knowledge is, is not, it's not known to be a place of knowledge in the, probably the last 50 years to a century, possibly. But before it had 
immense, immensely uh, great scholars, scholars and scholarship. So Ayol Habba, I ran into this couple of brothers just recently. Matter of fact, it was the day before yesterday, and we sat and they asked me about Iman, about faith. One of them does not even pray and has not prayed in years. Maybe most of his life he hasn't prayed. And the other, I, I don't know all the details, but he was the one asking me about, uh, you know, what is what does Aqida mean? What does creed mean? And then I said, well, creed also is based upon the pillars of, uh, of Iman. And I mentioned the six pillars as mentioned in the Hadith of Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam. And we got to the Qadr. He asked about Qadr, so I defined for him the Muratib of Qadr, the, the different levels of Qadr. But it amazed me that these people are the people of that language. The language that we still strive to better ourselves and improve our level in understanding, but their level of knowledge, you know, Allah has not favored them with that. And so much so that they don't even practice when it was time to pray. Not only were they not found, then one of them had many excuses when we tried to call him to pray again, later, for the next prayer. Uh, you know, I, I need to take a shower, I need this, but he hasn't prayed probably in years. And, and in fact, that was from his own statements. May Allah guide us in him. So Ayala Habba, that's a state, a status we don't want to reach. We want to benefit ourselves in it by attaining Islamic knowledge. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.